Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to do a little something different. Um, we're going to be watching a subscriber's uh, video. It's not my own video. Um, of someone that is a Patreon of myself um, has recently asked me some questions. And part of uh, being a Patreon um, on patreon.com slash Ross Ratty, you can support me. And in return for supporting me, I will answer your questions the best way I know possible. Um, you know, I, I think I may expand that a bit further and offer different things to different people in the future. But for now, that's kind of what I'm going with. And um, Adam recently has become a, a patron, and he decided to ask me questions in the form of a video. And he showed me some interesting things and. Um, in the second half of the video which I thought was kind of worth sharing with you guys you can kind of benefit from this rather than me answering the questions for Adam exclusively I think a lot of you guys would probably benefit from this so um, you know we've got Adam's permission here hopefully um, to get him to show it let us show his video to you guys and share his experiences um, with you so you know if you guys want to do this um, I'm open to this this is a pretty cool idea I think this is an interesting thing we're gonna we're gonna show you guys here so if you guys want to do this whether or not you're a patreon subscriber um, I'm gonna try my best to get back to your questions but uh, this may be something that I only do for patreon subscribers uh, or supporters I should say so uh, if anyone else wants to do this or wants me to do something like this for them, um, yeah, I'll try to do this the best I can for you and potentially even show it to everybody else. Whether or not you want me to, it's up to you. So um, let's get into this. Uh, here's Adam's video here. And this is the his basement here that he's showing us. Let's go over. He's showing me his fig trees. Black Madeira right here. Okay. This one is my Smith tree. So Black Madeira, Smith tree. These are the two that didn't really grow for me this year. Green Aisha and Malta Black. All right. So he he's showing me his fig collection right now, and there's a few glaring things I notice, obviously, with these trees. And it looks like he just got some trees from Just Fruits and Exotics. Like myself, I ordered a couple Smith trees. From Just Roots and Exotics, by far and away, it is it is my best um, fig variety. Uh, so I putting my money where my mouth is and actually buying more fig trees, more Smith fig trees, because I think uh, it's my overall best fig, and there's absolutely no reason why I shouldn't have ten of them, minimum. So I'm I'm rooting quite a bit right here to my left. I'm going to be selling some quite a bit to my left but um, you know uh, I've already got somewhere in the neighborhood right now about seven smith trees I'll probably take about three from the closet here that are rooting and the rest I will I will sell and um, you know so Adam has paid close attention to what it is that I am growing what varieties I'm growing and this is uh, the varieties he's chosen and I think he's chosen actually some really good ones it's pretty shocking that somebody um, is listening to me this closely because it's extremely important um, to choose the right varieties and Adam has certainly done that now the two trees that he just showed me that he that never that never grew the entire season this is part of his question and really the biggest reason he was asking me uh, he wanted to find out why his fig trees didn't grow this year um, he says he got them from Bass, which we'll find out in just a second here. This is the size that I got. But they're they're very small. And they really never grew at all this year. And I really don't know why. I did wrong. They're in one gallon size pots. Um, you can see the soil in here is uh, not mulched. This one looks like it's mulched, the green Aishia. but this one's not. And the soil that both of them are growing in, because I know what Bass grows his trees in. I've been to his house three or four times. I've been in his greenhouse three or four times. Uh, and most people grow young fig trees 
they grow it in a sterile potting mix. Um, most plants in general are grown in a sterile potting mix. So if you're not feeding your trees in a sterile mix, you're not giving them any nutrients. The only nutrients they're getting is from the sun. And in most cases, that's not enough, especially these trees right here, which are certainly root bound. I don't need to even take the tree out of the pot to know. Um, they certainly have circling roots. There's probably not a whole lot of moisture in those pots. Um, his trees are just not getting enough nutrients. They're not getting enough water. Adam certainly needs to up pot them into a larger pot and I would recommend at a minimum a 10 gallon size pot. The trees you see behind the Malta Black and the Green Aishia, which are the Smith and the Black Madeira I think he mentioned, those are from Just Fruits and Exotics and they are only in 3 gallon size pots. We're going to see more trees in just a second here. Um, if I fast forward yeah. through this. So my so here's more of them here. He's got his Italian 258. Right here. And then there's the Ronde de Bordeaux. Ronde Bordeaux. And this one. This one is Long Diao. Long Diao. And, you know, here's the thing. I don't know what size those pots are, but they don't look to me like they're any bigger than a three-gallon size pot. When I get a nice one gallon size pot that's fully rooted out either six inches by six inches or four inches wide by nine inches tall I am certainly going to take that well rooted plant and put that in a 10 gallon size pot I'm gonna give it a lot of nutrients great soil I'm gonna give it the best start that I can give it and my trees are gonna be very happy I'm gonna mulch the container well mulched at least two inches Every single container in my yard is mulched. Why? And here's the reason, probably more likely, that Adam's trees didn't grow this year is because his trees are small. They're black in black pots. And the sun's beating on them all day. They need a lot of water. If the sun's beating them all day and they're not getting watered enough, the temperatures in the soil are very high. If the temperatures on a fig tree are above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, they will completely stall. They will continue they will stop growing completely. You will get a thing called summer dormancy, which I actually experienced in my first growing season ever of growing figs. It took me forever to figure out the reason. I scoured figs for fun. I scoured the internet. Only one guy actually had the right answer. It wasn't my soil, it wasn't my water, it wasn't my nutrients. It was because the soil was too warm. And a lot of people, probably a lot of you guys that live in California or Arizona, you probably don't even have black pots and I would recommend that you don't. Here in Pennsylvania and probably where Adam lives, I forget where Adam lives, but I think it's somewhere in the Northeast, you don't, you need to have black pots, but you also need to make sure that you're mulching the pots. That is going to cool the soil just enough to keep them at a high metabolism without stalling them in a summer dormancy. It's extremely important. Um, so if Adam were to mulch the containers, they would conserve more moisture. He wouldn't have to water as often. The temperature of the soil would be lower and his trees would have grown all year. Now, I'm not physically there. I can't physically inspect his trees, but I would recommend that you check for pests like scale. Scale will completely decimate a tree. It will completely stall a tree if it's high in numbers. Um, and the other things I mentioned, I recommend just checking for the right amount of water, up potting it, giving it nutrients, giving it more soil, letting the tree grow because it's completely root bound in that pot. So. I think this is a nice lesson for everybody and that's exactly why I'm kind of making these this video here of Adam's video. I have a question for you. I left these figs on the long view out. Did everybody see those figs? Right here. Would they ripen for me? So he's got he's on the right track. Early next year? Will they ripen for him early next year? And I've talked about this but only very briefly. If you leave the figs on your trees throughout the winter time, you bring them outside the next year, they're still on the tree. 
they will ripen for you, and they will be very early. They'll be like an earlier Brava, earlier than a Brava, which is pretty incredible and really nice. The only reason I personally don't do this is because I live in such a short climate that getting any fig to ripen main crop it takes a lot of time. It takes about a month, two months for them to set their main crop, to be in a position to actually set their main crop. So if I have fruit on there that's taking away energy from um, potential growth points to then fruit the main crop, then um, I'm kind of setting my tree back. I'm, I'm uh, hindering the tree in that way. And I personally wouldn't do that. But I think it's a really great experiment for Adam and a nice learning experience. You get a, you're going to get this fruit really early in the season, which is awesome. So, um, yeah, you know, either way, leave it on, don't take it off. It doesn't matter. I think either way, it's there's some nice pros and cons there for you to make a decision. Now, I think Adam here is going to... Okay, so here... This is his uh, LSU Champagne tree uh, that he also got from my recommendations, and he's showing us an air layer. He took an air layer off because he didn't like the form. And I don't like the form either. I'm with you. Again, the pot is too small. And number two, you need to be training your trees, guys. If you're growing them in containers, they need to be trained as a single-stemmed tree. If you have multiple trunks coming up from the base, I know figs love to do that. They will do that in the ground, and it's almost to your disadvantage to let them grow, to let them not grow as a bush in the ground, unless you live in a super warm place. But in containers, I find that it's extremely more productive. It's it really is a noticeable, a very noticeable difference between a tree that has many suckers coming from the base versus a tree that has a, is grown as a single stem tree. I think a lot of the nutrients gets put into that one tree, that one trunk, and uh, makes it a lot easier for those things to fruit and to set reliably and in larger quantities. So um, that's my personal recommendation, my personal preference. I don't know anyone that's really growing... Um, fig trees and containers as bushes, multiple, multiple trunks from the base, and showing good success. It just isn't a thing. So um, I haven't really covered that topic. Uh, I really should. All right, so now he's taking us outside into his backyard. And... Um, he wants to show me his greenhouse and his raised beds. These are my raised beds. And I was wondering, I'm still working on setting them all in and leveling them. What kind of dirt would you fill them up with? Would you do straight compost? Would you do a mix of pine bark and soil? How would you do that? Would you do mushroom soil? I'm planning on growing, you know, Strawberries and this one, tomatoes and this one, you know, radishes, potatoes, carrots, whatever, and this one, maybe corn and that one, and you know, herbs and whatever. Okay, so, um, I, I don't want to bash Adam here, but uh, I think we can all agree that filming is not easy. <laughs> First off, his camera needs to be tilted to the side and you will get that full screen view but also it's extremely shaky it's not easy right so I don't mean to uh, to bash Adam here but it just goes to show how, how difficult this can be um, now in terms of the raised bed um, I personally have strayed away from raised beds even though I have raised beds um, I've learned over the years that I would rather not have them. Um, I would have them in one situation and one situation only. And that is to control 
certain things that I need to control. Uh, control the roots specifically. So things like uh, raspberries and blackberries can send out runners really far away. Um, really mess with your neighbors. Maybe even jujubes this may help with. If you're going to grow jujubes, they actually wake up late and they, se they tend to send out a lot of suckers. So growing them in a raised bed may help contain those suckers. So that's kind of why I do it um, to this day. But knowing what I know now and redoing all this if I were to do that, because Adam's pretty much got a blank slate in his backyard, right? Um, I wouldn't grow the things he just mentioned other than strawberries in raised beds. What I would do instead, because, well, strawberries, you can contain them in a raised bed, right? They'll send out runners. I like to let them go along as a ground cover. I think they make really nice ground cover, a nice mulch. Um, I plant them underneath my trees. You know, I don't mind doing that. Fertilize the tree, build up lots of soil, add a lot of organic matter, throw on the, the ground cover of your choice, whether it's lingonberries, cranberries, low bush blueberries, um, strawberries. Um, there's a lot of fruiting ground covers, and you'll be all right. You know, um, let them do their thing. You can even put down you know, a, a, a patch of onions or a patch of uh, shallots or a patch of multiplier onions or a patch of, you know, garlic. I mean, you could do all kinds of really interesting things around your trees that I think a lot of people take for granted. You can obviously see that with my trees. You know, I have a lot of things around the root balls of my trees. You know, I have multiple trees in the same hole. Um, the raised beds, though, I would not plant... I would not grow many things in raised beds because creating your own natural raised bed, I think it's just better. Um, you can certainly use the native soil, the native clay, which he very clearly has here. It's very high in nutrients, holds lots of water, and um, you can get yourself really nutritious plants that way. Rather than adding in all this external soil, which could be good depending on the source and what it is. Um, things are just better this way. Instead, I would create a, a new bed, which I did on my channel, guys, for those of you who didn't see this. We created a new bed, and all we did was lay on cardboard, cardboard straw. We framed out the bed, put down the straw, put down the cardboard, and added on four to six inches of compost. And that's how you create a bed. That's how you create um, an annual gardening bed. So I think that's better. And rather than having a raised bed that's a foot high, like some of mine are, and I think some of Adam's look like they are, maybe even 18 inches tall. I think he's got one that's even taller. You really need to pay attention to the, the um, nutri nutrients in that raised bed. You're constantly putting in amendments. Whereas I think you can kind of get away with it more if you're just growing things in the ground. You're creating your own raised bed by just adding in compost. If you just add compost year after year, which you can't necessarily do in a raised bed because it's like a container. You fill the container with soil, you can't add more, con more soil. You know what I mean? The only thing you can do is keep adding more nutrients in the form of fertilizers and, and, uh, and micronutrients. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's not a horrible idea, but knowing what I know now, I would not do it this way. I would not grow things in raised beds. There is one benefit to growing things in raised beds, in especially in Adam's climate, is that you can have access to a lot more heat earlier in the season, getting you really strong, fast-growing, vigorous, highly highly fruiting plants, right? If you're going to grow tomatoes in a raised bed or peppers, you're going to have insane production. You really are. Um, in fact, I really should have a raised bed for that purpose, but I don't. Um, I would probably make the bed somewhere between six inches tall. I'd probably make it no bigger than six inches tall, and that six inches is really going to heat up very quickly and get these transplants that I plan out, you know, the, the day after my last frost, they're going to go, they're going to be supercharged. They're going to grow and grow and grow. And um, 
it's super beneficial. I mean, the, the amount of yield that Adam's probably going to get out of his tomato plants or even his corn may be, like, way higher than my tomatoes that are just directly planted in the ground. Only really four to six inches above grade. But the fact that he's got a raised bed, the exterior warms up. It's kind of like growing them in a container, right? His are, though, quite reflective, right? They're made of this reflective material here which is going to reflect a lot of that heat and kind of defeat the purpose in a way but um, you know if you want to do it this way for a long lasting purpose you can grow a lot of definitely heat loving crops in these beds what I wouldn't do is grow things like radishes like Adam was mentioning I would not grow the cool loving crops Things that uh, need temperatures to be cooler to stop them from bolting. Well, how would you do that? I, I hope that answers that. And so he's now he's showing me the greenhouse. As a, a lounge in the area as well. My question is, should I put a layer of plastic at the bottom? I put the rocks on the greenhouse. I was thinking the layer of plastic might help with humidity. Yeah, certainly. Um, I'm not sure entirely how much that will help with humidity, but in my case, I have weeds in my greenhouse. Only putting a you know a few inches of gravel wasn't enough. Um, I would certainly put down plastic. I think it would help. I do. Uh, I think it would make things cleaner, nicer looking more professional um, it's a better way to do it without a doubt but I'm not sure. so he's growing fruit trees there This is his warm microclimate. This is my microclimate on the side of the house. It's super warm. The sun beats on the wall. So this must be the south side of his house. I think Adam has shown me pictures of that section of the house, and um, it's certainly a really nice microclimate. Right against a brick wall. He's even got some covering from the top to stop some of the rain. I mean, he is going to be in fig heaven with figs there. Um, I think his plan's all right. You know, I'm not going to uh, disagree with it. Um, he's got some nice multiple plantings in the same hole. That's a nice way to do it. I would recommend instead grafting if you can, if you know how to do that, if you can get the scion wood. It's a bit trickier, right? Um, but you can certainly make it work, and it would be more beneficial that way to have one tree and multiple varieties grafted onto that one tree. Um, not that you can't have good success as I've had with multiple trees in the same hole. You know, there's a bit of pros and cons to both of them, and I think uh, one is just really catering to the backyard grower. You know, uh, it makes things a lot more simple, but it also makes things more complex because you need to know how to train these things to give each of those trees their own little area and prune out everything in the middle. You know, it can be a bit tricky. So, you know, it's a, it's a give and take there. Um, in terms of his choices, though, peaches, nectarines, persimmons, and figs, those are some good choices. Um, my peaches do pretty well. You know, they are really disease resistant. I think you need to pay attention to that, Adam. If you're getting a, uh, a stone fruit or an apple or a pear, it must be disease resistant. Otherwise, you're going to struggle a little bit, and you need to, you're going to need to be doing some spraying. You're probably going to need to be doing some spraying regardless, or some bagging regardless. Uh, 
Um, peaches, I think, are a good choice. Nectarines are not. They're a bit more sensitive to disease, a lot more problems. Um, I would not recommend those. You know, I would instead recommend, obviously, persimmons. Uh, if you got room for pawpaw, you know, that's a long time away, but uh, those will certainly fruit for you reliably year after year. Very tasty fruits, man. Oh, my God. Um, you could also do a pomegranate. Salavatsky in that little microclimate you got. And those will be very easy to grow. Um, you know, it's a bit more difficult depending on where you live. What else would I grow? I mean, there's certain things that are just worth the effort and certain things that are not. You know, it's really up to you. Um, I love blackberries and raspberries. They're so, so easy. Strawberries, extremely easy. Um, you know, in one of those raised beds, I would grow some blackberries and raspberries. If you're going to choose only one of them, I would grow raspberries. And uh, for certain, grow strawberries. Um, those are the easiest things in my climate. Raspberries and strawberries. It's a joke. Uh, they're amazing. The other alternative, I think, to blackberries would be to grow mulberries. Um, if you can get yourself a Girardi dwarf, that will stay small. You can plant many of them, and they give you a huge fruit set very early in the season. We're talking June. And then you just have to net the tree because it's so small, you won't have a problem. Um, you know, the birds, I'm sure, are going to give you a problem at some point with these strawberries and these, uh, you know, these peaches probably as well, the raspberries, the blackberries. You know, you may have uh, struggle with uh, squirrels and the persimmons. You know, but if you can kind of disguise these things, bag a lot of this stuff, net a lot of this stuff, you you will have zero problems. It's really that simple. You plant it, don't even have to water it in my climate, and you're done. Um, just add on that orga organic material as much as you can year after year. All those yard clippings, all that mulch, so much organic material has been added to my trees. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully, Adam learned something here, and I answered all of his questions. Um, you know, again, if anybody wants to do this kind of thing, you know, I'll be happy to do it for you. So um, I'll talk to you all soon. Take care, guys.